So, moving towards the systems view, ok, I need to change slide. So, we have goals based on the goals, take decisions that influence state of system. That all again, it is just a kind of curved diagram of the same linear diagram we saw a couple of minutes, I mean, a few minutes ago. This is a, this alone is not enough, we do not have abstract goals. The goals are always relative to the state of the system. So, based on the state and based on that and the goals and based on the gaps, we take the decisions. But as soon as you take decisions, that is going to affect the state of the system, which will, will force us to make more decisions in future. And whatever decisions that we take will have effects. Sometimes we call it side effects because we have not planned for it, we have not thought of it, we have not anticipated it. Maybe we were just uh, we did not know or maybe we were just uh, ignorant or maybe we were just too lazy saying that if you are considering all that will make my life more difficult. So, let me just ignore all that it could be any of the reason, but whatever it is it took a decision it will have effects. Sometimes you call it side effects, but it still affects. Unfortunately, you are not the only player in the system. So, state of system also affects the action of others and others have goals. It is a simple example is even registering for a course, it is not that only you are going to register for a course and if course has a limit and you told your friend that I am going to register for this course, suddenly you find that your entire batch is registered for the same course and before you could do it, limit has hit. Probably it was your idea to do that course in the first place, but it is already exhausted. So, your goal is unmet and they will also have more side effects. This is what uh, so, as we move to systems view, it is not that for every problem we need to go and model the entire world. We need to look at what are things that can influence, that can affect and if it is too much and learn to draw a boundary for the system and consider as much elements as required to address the issue in a little more fundamental manner. So, how to do systems thinking? First, we are going to learn this act of thinking dynamically. The course is called system dynamics. So, we have to do and uh, dynamics means behavior over time, how things are evolving over time. We are familiar with the concept, we are familiar with events. One thing that we are not familiar is as soon as a problem is presented, we should say ok, what is happening over time. If I say ok, there is a uh, unemployment is is that 8 percent, ok that is fine. Let me see how is unemployment has been behaving over the last 10 years, 15 years, 20 years and how do you think it should behave in the future. So, let us try to understand what kind of dynamics that we want to create because it is not a one time thing, it is over time. Uh, whatever decisions you are going to make is going to have an impact over time and there is lot to learn from what is happening in the past. So, we are going to cultivate this thinking dynamic. Uh, in the terms of dynamics of various uh, variables. Second is uh, causal thinking, thinking in terms of effect, cause and effects. We are going to identify some variables and see whether that has an effect on something else or does it cause some other effect. Identify is there any potential feedbacks within the system, what are the delays that is happening in the system. So, we can start explicitly identifying them. Once we are there, then we will also learn how to do what we call a stock and flow modeling, where we start to think of things as accumulations. So, whatever we what can I say um, like even if I stop say uh, to reduce uh, say the total pollution within the lake of power, I can say ok, let me ensure that no sewage water enters the lake, but already there is so much sewage water already entered the lake, already so many pollution has already entered the lake right. So, that has accumulated over the years, just because you turned off the sewage today does not mean that that is going to disappear. So, that becomes more apparent as you start looking at things as accumulations, it is getting accumulated somewhere and there has to be mass balance, we are used to mass balance in a more compact setting, but that is true for environmental systems also, social systems also, there is already a accumulation of things. It can be physical like pollution level or it can be even uh, what can I say uh, mental models or uh, beliefs 
over time people have been led to believe some things you can't just send one news article or one announcement saying that from today you have to do like this you can't change people's belief system so immediately people's beliefs accumulate over time so only it will take time to change that belief and replace it with some other whatever belief right or wrong so that is what we mean by stock and flows let's see there is a stock of things and finally thinking endogenously okay, systems as a cause we are used to attributing various things as a external factor it is not my fault it is it's, things are beyond my control it's because uh, the competitor did it it's because somebody else did it so once you start blaming others then you don't have any leverage if i if i want to control if i want to run it uh, effective operation or make good decisions then you have to ensure that all the variables are endogenous to the system if we say demand is external then demand is external then uh, how it happens why it happens you don't know but when i say endogenous is okay can i do some pricing schemes which will influence demand that also you might have thought yes sir when you do pricing demand will get affected so now suddenly demand is not any more exogenous it is endogenous to a system because it is reacting to some decisions that you are taking which is in your control so we try to look at it endogenous okay that that has to be clearly characterized and left so we have to understand that okay these are external and these are endogenous yeah so it is like this in real reality things can actually be affected externally as well as endogenously but we believe that some are uh, it is not affected endogenously or not uh, are only affected exo, uh, endogenously or exogenously right so uh, uh, if it is indeed endogenous then we need to identify it and later we found that no it is not endogenous then we leave it okay it is indeed exogenous so we will do more these characterize system dynamics approach just to give a brief example uh, when i say dynamics this is what i mean we look at the behavior over time this is uh, from the trading economics that come on india's car production the last 10 years you can see there has been a kind of a not a steep but a steady growth and also you can observe cycles you can observe standard cycles of same sizes which can used to anticipate so if you are the manager in charge of whatever the last quarter sale is going to dip you better bounce back right so now with that we'll give some revelations of what has been happening uh, for us to improve this example of a simple causal loop diagram of a uh, this example on rat population we're looking at so rat population is affected by the birth rate and it's affected by the death rate also population also affects it and affects the birth rate birth rate also affects the population and in this example the population also affects the of course the density given that the area here is assumed to be external meaning you don't have any control rats cannot migrate they are fixed in that area uh so here this is the example of an exogenous variable and here it is assumed density influences your mortality which affects your birth rate so these kind of diagrams are helpful to understand what are the variables in system how they are linked to each other there are no equations in in this model as of now see so move on this is what is called a stock flow model where these rectangles are called as stocks they accumulate things over time and they are affected by the flows uh, shown by this thick arrows uh, with the valve infection rate so there are susceptible population who get infected with some disease they can become infected population who after they recover become recovered population so in this diagram the total population is conserved the population suppose they start with whatever 100 people either they have to be susceptible at some point if they get infected so 10 people get infected this becomes 90 and this becomes 10 and when they start recovering 
suppose 2 people recovered this becomes 8 and this becomes 2. So, that total people gets conserved they do not just disappear from the system right. So, there is conservation of uh, mass. So, when you move to this you will be moving to equations relating them uh, it need not be simple addition it can be whatever type of relation that is requires between the various variables. Uh, since all our engineers the underlying equations are all differential equations. So, we can nicely model it uh, once you have the equations and if it happens to be linear models various linear systems theories can be applied and uh, whatever methods we learn to analyze uh, differential equations can be adopted here to understand uh, and solve. But in most of the in all the other courses you would have learned only with x y and z and various Greek alphabets and uh, Roman numerals I mean Roman letters x y z and differentiation double differentiation and all those things. The difficult and challenging part is identifying with the variables contract rate, total population infectivity, what are all those things and then coming up with the equations and then once you have the structure and find it linear then we can solve it. If it is non linear then we do resort to a lot of simulations to understand the analysis. So, we will be restricting ourselves to simulations and towards the end I will we'll be looking at some specific scenarios we can look at what kind of control theory approaches can be used. So, system dynamic methodology is modeling technique to frame understand discuss complex issues and problems we are going to be focused on behavioral system we are going to look at system boundaries interrelationships learn from the model development process itself. So, that is the biggest learning the also that you will get till now given a problem we can solve part of the exercise and learning in this course is how do you figure out and understand and draw the boundaries of the all the problem how do you identify the variables how do you identify relationships between them once you have that causal map that itself is a big learning till now nobody has shown the links and has under try to understand what affects what. So, even coming up with that itself is a learning process it is not that it has to be simulated just coming up causal map and then building the simulation and then trying to analyze. So, uh, taking any physical or economic or social environment phenomena we will try to apply system and methodology. So, that we can uh, we build some models out of it appropriate models and uh, further our understanding. So, in our course we are going to learn causal loop diagram and stock flow diagrams we are going to elicit mental models of business, social, economic, environmental systems, explicitly accounting for feedback and delays, uh, test and improve the model using computer simulation, analyze the model and simulation results correctly. It is not enough to just build the model, we need to actually analyze it. So, uh, this is a very popular book uh, by Sturman, Business Dynamics, uh, we will be following uh, most of though the title say business dynamics it has lot of models on environment and social systems also. Uh, it is a big fat book Kirkwood has put up some nice notes on system dynamics uh, online it is free you can take a look at that. If on basic concepts are quite easy the challenge is when we try to apply those basic concepts in actually uh, trying to build a model of a system that we are studying that is challenging. Other reading material provide I will I will give links to uh, appropriate notes or whatever I write or whatever uh, whatever slides we put it will be up. We will be using Wensum and maybe some Python and R if simulation become large maybe to the end of the course I will teach for large models how do you do better analysis. It's, uh, so, we will be using computers 